uh, Shari, uh, we actually lost you. Uh, are you muted? Shari, are you there? Okay, uh, I think guys, we actually lost him. Uh, I think he has some network bandwidth trouble. So, uh, and I think he has joined us back. Uh, just a second. Okay, uh, no problem. Uh, like once he connects with his, okay, he's here. Yeah, hello. Hello. yeah. Shadi, we lost you in between. Yeah, yeah they, it's very um, it's a make all the summit, so that's why I was okay. trying in the call again. Okay. So um, as I was saying, with, without taking much of um, um, our time, um, so I was able to get all this um, information from, from him, but just so you know, again, um, he gives you all what you need, but you also need to put in your own effort in order to have what you want. Some people will get into this um, career maybe because the team can the don't have how are you still going to keep the job. Simply gives you um takes to have the job, give you all what it takes to keep the job. So um I was able to follow his instructions. Even now, as um somebody who had a job, who has a job, I'm still following his instructions. I, I still need help from him. I'm still working with him. I mean, it, it's just so so amazing that um when you finish um a course, then you have to help you, maybe you can call and tell him like, hey, how do they do this, they do this, how do they do this? That's that's a very good job support right there. Um, okay, uh, Shadi, thank you so much, uh, you know, uh, for you know, for actually sharing experience with, you know, everyone. Um, actually, your voice is breaking in between because of bad network, but that is, I think you know, people are, uh, people were able to understand what you're actually trying to communicate with them. So uh, just to give you a quick, uh, you know, summary, like what Shadi would like to, you know, wanted to say, like he actually worked very hard for four to five months and uh, if you won't believe, he actually left his job in the last one month and really worked hard in order to make sure that, you know, he gets the job. And fortunately, when the, uh, the day when he told me, I was very surprised that he actually got the job. So, uh, so it is actually a good journey, which he had. I think we can proceed now uh, and we can continue with our session. Thanks a lot, Sherry, for uh, coming and sharing your experience with all of the students really appreciate your time. Okay. So guys, Thank you, no problem. Yeah. So guys over here at Think Loudly, we follow a principle that is Ubuntu. So many of you might be aware already, like what is Ubuntu? But if I tell you the story, the story behind Ubuntu. So in Africa, uh, it's actually this story actually is coming from Africa. And there is a culture, Ubuntu culture, which is followed in Africa. A lot of my friends from Africa have always, you know, told me, and this is the story which, uh, which had been given to us by the African. So there was an anthropologist, uh, you know, in Africa, and he proposed a game to African tribal children. And you know what happened? Like he, he proposed a game that he placed a suite of basket you know, near the tree. And what happened, he asked children, all the children to basically, you know, stand, uh, you know, stand 100 meters away from the, uh, you know, from, from the tree and ask them like whosoever will first pick up the basket, he will win all the sweets. Now, surprisingly, when anthropologists said, ready, steady, go, you will be surprised to know what happened all the children, they held 
each other's hand and started running towards the basket. And an anthropologist was very surprised to see that all the, all the children, when they reached near the basket and picked up the basket together, so he was surprised to see like everyone was together and they picked up the basket. So anthropologist actually, you know, asked like asked all the children, why did you do so? So the children say, the children answered Ubuntu. Now, what is the meaning of Ubuntu? Ubuntu means how can one be happy when others are sad? So this is a very, you know, important line, which they actually try to communicate with the, with the person that how can one be happy when others are sad? And that actually became a very strong motive of our Think Cloudly as well, that we are here not to just, you know, sell the courses or sell the services. If we are trying to sell the services, that should actually bring some results in people's life. So we are, our team across many different countries, they are actually trying their best. You know, there is a payment team, marketing team, sales team, everyone is actually trying their best in order to make sure to provide the best service. And that is what, you know, we always follow here at Think Cloudly that I am because we are, okay? So that is the most important, you know, uh, message, which I would like to pass on to everyone that it is not one student like who get the job is not gonna help others. It is really our responsibility that if we have some tips and tricks, you should, you, you can always bring that to us give it to us, we will pass on to other students so that they also get benefited out of it. Okay. So that is the principle which I wanted to pass, you know, to all of you. Now, now let's start with our, you know, today's topic that is on REST API. So guys, the reason we picked up this topic on REST API is that this is not dependent on any cloud. So over here today, some of you are attending AWS sessions or some of you are, you know, uh, would like to attend AWS sessions or classes. Some of you would like to attend Azure class or some of you would like to attend some other classes. But REST API is actually a concept which is followed in all the clouds, in all the DevOps area. It's actually a concept which is followed across the globe, okay? Now you would, you would be, you know, wondering then what is this REST API? So if I tell you, you know that there is, let's imagine that there is an application, okay? So let's imagine that you have an application like Facebook, okay? When you have a Facebook application, Facebook application has one user interface, okay? User interface, which means this is the interface by which every one of you can use Facebook. So in our cell phone, we can download an application or on a Google Chrome, we can open an application that is Facebook and we can click on some buttons. We can type something in the text box. We can see some images. So that is user interface, an interface which is made for users. Okay. Now this user interface can only be used by humans. So if there are humans, so those humans can actually use this user interface. But now, now users can, the humans can use this Facebook with the help of UI. But what about there are third party applications? There are applications which also would like to integrate with Facebook. Okay. So there are some applications which also would like to integrate with Facebook. Now user interface is actually made for users, which means humans. But what about third party APIs or third party applications? So if there are multiple applications, how these applications can interact with Facebook? Because applications are non-living. Those are not humans, right? So these applications are actually non-living. So how will these applications will interact with Facebook or will use Facebook service or face Facebook as an application? So for that reason, Facebook also expose another interface that is API, application programming interface. So this interface is meant to be used by 
all the different applications. User interface is being used by users, humans. However, on the other end, applications always use API, which is application programming interface to interact with different applications. Now, now I hope you understand that if there are two applications, let's imagine that there are two applications. This is app one and this is application two. Okay. Now when application one and application two would like to communicate with each other. So they need the API. Okay. Application programming interface. This application programming interface belongs to this application so that application one can communicate with application two via API. API is the application programming interface, which enables the communication between two applications. Let's imagine that there is another application which would like to communicate with application one. Now let's imagine that this app one does not expose any API. It does not have any API. In that case, there cannot be any communication. There cannot be any communication, but if this application has API application programming interface, then app zero can communicate with app one. So API integration is certainly very important because applications cannot talk to each other. Now, now before we actually jump on to the real concept or the technology, let's first go through the, you know, con uh, the examples. So these examples are going to help you to understand what I am trying to communicate with all of you. Let's imagine these are users. Okay. So these are users and I hope every one of you has, you know, ha might have, you know, placed the order on Amazon. Like Amazon is very, is, is an e-commerce website where you can, you know, buy, uh, you know, clothes, electronic items, a lot of different, uh, you know, you know, commodities you can buy on. Amazon. But when you try to check out, when you proceed to check out, what happens? It basically Amazon collects your information like your credit card details. It, you know, captures your expiry time. Okay. It captures your OTP one time password. And then it basically communicate with other applications such as PayPal and PayPal deducts the money from your account. Now, can you imagine guys that when you are trying to buy something and your money is getting deducted from the bank account, how is this possible? Is it a magic somewhere happening that you clicked on proceed to check out and automatically you, your money is deducted from your account. There is no magic. There are two applications which are communicating with each other to make that checkout happen. Okay. So let's say that when you buy something on Amazon, Amazon will send a request to PayPal that Naman is trying to buy a product from us. Please deduct $50 from his account. PayPal will validate all the information provided as part of request and it will deduct $50 and will send the success, success response that the transaction is successful please ship the order. So there is a communication between two applications which are happening. So you can consider this is application one and this is application two. And these two applications are having communication between each other. Now, now you would be wondering how is this possible? How two applications are able to communicate with each other? Because PayPal exposes the API. Okay. So PayPal has API application programming interface. This interface is meant for application to application conversion conversation. And that is why Amazon is able to talk to PayPal with the help of API. After that, we have like, let's go to, let's go to another, you know, example. Let's imagine you would like to book flight tickets. So when you would like to book flight tickets, let's say you would like to travel from New York to Paris. Now you will search tickets on Google. 
so you will search flights on google and whichever you think you will be you will be you know buying the tickets then google as an application is going to communicate with the airline application so airline will also have its own application so ethiopian airlines or united airlines or air france air india all these are different you know companies different organizations and each and every organization has their own application so google will communicate that naman is trying to book a flight from london to paris at this uh, at this time and here and you know here's the booking details so there is a communication between application to application so that you know flight tickets can be booked and how it is possible it is possible because ethiopian airlines application exposes api so with the with the help of api google is able to communicate with the ethiopian airlines there is no magic which is happening around the globe it is api which is actually making things possible within few clicks few seconds so within few seconds it, everything is done so when you click on proceed to checkout within 5 seconds your payment is done how is this possible there is no human who is going to you know collect the money from bank or basically you know deduct the money from bank there is an application to application communication and that is possible with the help of api now now there are several types of api however rest rest is one of the best api communication across the globe okay and every other application in today's world whether it's a banking applications whether it's uh, you know it's airlines application whether it's netflix any application they use rest api rest api stand rest stands for representational state transfer okay representational state transfer so this api actually enables the communication between two applications okay now let's imagine that this is your application 1 and then you have application 2 okay now you have to enable the communication between application and application 2 you will be able to do it with the help of rest api okay now what do we actually need so these are the requirements so that a request can basically go so these are the requirements and there will be a response which will be sent back okay so over here first of all you need the http url okay url is uniform resource locator which means this is the address of the application destination application so you need a destination application address so this is the address okay this is the address of the des application 2 after that you have to send some details okay in the request so when you are trying to send a request you have to send the details like if you are making a payment then you have to send credit card information you have to send other information about user so you you will be sending in the body so there will be a body which will contain all the information about credit card about different uh, you know a different information which needs to be sent to application 2 and after that we have http methods this is very important now it is very difficult for application 2 to understand what is the purpose of this request what application 1 is trying to do so there are some http methods or this is also known as verb so this is specify what this application 1 is trying to do so this is you can say this is actually is the intention what application 1 would like to do with application 2 okay uh, yes uh um your your, your line is breaking um name and your line is breaking um, yeah would you really check connect is it uh, breaking for everyone guys maybe it's from you i don't think it's from everyone no, no it's from not. Yeah, it's yeah. okay it's for me it's good loud and clear over here okay thank 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 you everyone thank you really. no, so then yeah then is try connecting once um yeah okay so guys over here what i am trying no one we cannot hear you yeah 
Okay. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Over here, guys, what I'm trying to say is, application one is trying to communicate with application two. What are the requirements? We are discussing about the requirements. That what are the requirements for this application communication? Now let's imagine that there is a person one, a human one, and person two. When person one is requesting person two, let's say that you know you 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 are trying to uh, you know buy some groceries, okay, in the store. So person one will basically pass some message or a request to store owner that I would like to buy this thing. I would like to buy that. So this is kind of a communication we are trying to have between applications. So application one would like to have the communication with application two, and there is a request because application is is application. It is not intelligent like human. Humans are more intelligent than software. So these are two different software which are trying to communicate. So in the request, this request has to be very proper so that application two can understand. Now humans can understand. By making, uh, you know, some actions or by passing some message, but application one and application two can communicate with the help of proper request, and these are the requirements for the request. What are the requirements? First is URL. URL means link of second application. Link, just like you have Google.com, Facebook.com. Those are the links. So you have to give the address. URL is the address of second application. So then, it, that is why application one will be able to send the request. Then we have HTTP body. Body specify what is going to be there in the request. So it is going to contain, you know, the credit card information. When let's say Amazon is trying to communicate with PayPal, so Amazon will send credit card information of user. It will send the amount to be deducted. It will send user information as well. So all these. All this part of all that will be part of HTTP body, okay? So body will contain actual actual message, and method method specify what action need to be performed. Let's say there are various methods, but there are primarily four methods: get, post, put, delete. Let's say if you choose delete, what will happen? That information from application two will be deleted. But app Amazon is not trying to delete anything; it is trying to Make the transaction. It is trying to deduct the money. So for that, you will use post. Post is actually used to tell application two that you have to perform that certain action. Get. Get is used. Let's say if application one is trying to get some information from application two, so you will choose keyword get. And put. Let's say that you would like to update something. Let's say there are some entries. Uh, let's say you would like to schedule your flight tickets, reschedule your flight tickets. So you are trying to update the timing, or date, or date and time. So you are trying to update something. So get is to retrieve some data. Post is for making transactions. Put is used for updating something, and delete is used to delete some data on application two. So on behalf of this verbs, application two can understand the intention of app one. That what are what what is application one trying to you know say? So whatever request you pass, that will have all these information, the address, because see there are so many application in the world. So address is important. Otherwise, how application will application one will know that this is the application two? There are so many applications. So you have to specify the address. Now body body will contain actual actual matter. It will contain information. And method will tell what is the intention of request, whether it has to be deleted, like data needs to be deleted, or it, application one is trying to re retrieve some data, or it is trying to update something, or it is trying to make some transaction. So these are the methods which are used accordingly. Now you can see over here a diagram. So here in the diagram you can see this is the application one which is trying to talk to application two. So you can say. This is the client application, and this is the web server. Now, when application one is trying to make the request, so what we need, we need HTTP method, which is the intention, whether it should be get, post, put, delete. Then we have HTTP URL. HTTP URL will tell the address. Body will contain the matter, and authorization token. This is really important, guys. 
authorization token is like your password you know application one is talking to application two now everyone every application cannot have access to application two so there will be a special token by which that request will be authorized and then only the response will be sent back now when the response is sent back when if the transaction is successful there will be a success message that transaction is successful if transaction is failed if request is failed then it will say failed request failed okay so there will be an important message which will be sent in the response there is one more thing which is status code status code means that it basically helps the receiver over here the application one it basically receive a status code on that basis it is able to you know identify whether the request was successful or was failed so if the status code is 200 200 in it 200 status code means that the request is successful so if application one is receiving after transaction if application one is receiving status code 200 it means transaction was successful if the status code was 400 it it means application one will understand if the request was 400 then it, it then it understands okay uh, it understands that the request over here in body there was some problem so there are various status code which you can read online and that will be really good okay so this is it guys from rest concept and i would like to uh, you know over here uh, i would like to talk about it career guidance uh, and here i would like to tell you like what should be your path you know to success whether you are attending any course let's say you are attending aws or you will go through azure or google cloud you know whichever cloud you basically prefer so your path should be to attend one of the cloud so over here we have mentioned aws solution architect uh, however it can be azure or it can be google cloud so it can be any cloud but very first step to get into it if you are coming from non it background it, it it is to learn the cloud technology because if you learn the cloud technology that will actually give you a very good idea about the it infrastructure which does not need any coding language okay it does not if you if you have coding language if you know coding language that is good for you if you do not know then it is good that if you start learning aws solution architect or azure or google cloud which does not need any coding experience so that is why cloud is considered to be the easiest entry point in it after that once you complete the course on cloud then you can start looking out for the job after i mean after cloud course you can apply for three roles cloud architect cloud admin and cloud engineer so these are the three roles you can apply after finishing your course on cloud once you finish your course and if you really if you're still interested to learn more then you should go and start learning terraform terraform is the infrastructure automation now now you know there is a netflix we every day we use netflix what happens so when we are using netflix there is a very big infrastructure sitting in the background there are thousands of servers there are thousands of it infrastructure which is sitting in the background so it is really important to automate something it is automate it infrastructure that is possible with the help of terraform so from after cloud this basically this part this part is covered as part of devops engineer so this is your devops so whosoever is interested in it first step is to learn cloud and if you are still looking out for the job you can get into devops in devops you can learn first step is to learn terraform second you can learn jenkins over here when you complete these two courses you can apply for devops engineer or a cloud engineer role and after that if you are still interested and if you have more time you can go ahead and learn dockers and kubernetes and ansible these are the two different courses which you can learn by yourself if you have enough you know idea of reading documentation you can learn yourself or if you need any institution help it is not only about think loudly I, over here i would like to be very transparent it is not about only think loudly it is 
something which is dependent on you that if you want to go and read about your read your yourself or you would need our help or you will you need some other institution help but this is the path so very first path is to go for cloud course that is the first path here you will can, can, can apply for three roles then second is terraform which is devops uh, over here from here your devops journey starts when you go towards jenkins after jenkins you can apply for devops engineer and cloud engineer job because you will have a very good about, about idea about cloud and devops and then if you go towards docker and kubernetes and ansible you can apply for senior devops role okay after that there are some few things which i would like to you know um, communicate there are few checkpoints for every one of you every one of you what what basically student tries to do they try to focus on cloud 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 and you know they try to focus in the class but there are few other things which we have to make sure are ready so your linkedin profile should be ready which reflects some of the experience on cloud it should not be that you are coming from a banking uh, sector or you are coming from a nursing sector and you are trying to look out for the job try to modify your description and try to put some projects some personal projects on linkedin profile prepare your resume so if you need our help we can also help you in resume or if you can prepare your resume yourself that is also very good make sure your resume is updated after that make sure your indeed and monster account are also ready because these are the job portals account and on every day basis you are trying to apply for the jobs on every day basis like let's say you apply 5 or 10 jobs every day to ensure that you know you get frequent recruiter calls so if you have started your cloud course or if you are planning to start your cloud course or the first step make sure you are actually have all these things ready okay so that you can frequently get some calls it's okay if your course is still going on but ensure that your accounts are ready after that we have shortcuts so over here shortcuts i'm just telling you some shortcuts so that you know it can really help you so you can take some interview preparation sessions you can you know find some interview questions on our think cloudly portal or some other website on google and try to attend ensure that you know whether your course is ended or not you are going for frequent interviews to collect as many questions as you can because when you go in the interview you will be able to answer in the first interview you will be able to answer one question out of 10 in second you will be able to answer two questions out of 10 so you will be collecting lot of questions which are being asked you know these days but when you go in 11th interview then your chances of passing the interview becomes much much higher and then you can also take our live projects uh, which can really help you to gain some real time experience and it will really help you to you know put something in front of the interviewer so this is all about the rest api and it career guidance guys this is what i wanted to communicate in today's session however please do not leave right now we have a quiz a very short quiz which is intended for uh, for the people who are new in it or who are new to cloud so just let's go and you know let's go and give the quiz and there are some you know quizzes so goodies for whosoever wins so please make sure you are dropping your question on the chat open your chat whosoever will answer first you know we will note down the name and accordingly we will announce the winners so please uh, open the zoom chat and try to answer when you see the question try to put your answer very first in the chat and accordingly what we are going to do we are going to you know give you the uh, you know like don't uh, antra please do not use uh, annotation yeah so antra please do not uh, please do not uh, you know use all these annotations just drop your answers in the chat window and accordingly our team is going to assess who is the winner these are very basic questions this is just for a fun moment to bring the fun moment in webinar that's why we brought this quiz uh, it's not so technical so make sure your chat window is open i'm sharing the quiz uh, on the screen just give me one minute i'm sharing this so you can respond when you're responding on the chat ensure uh, you are sending the question number and a b c d whatever you want to you know click
so we will give 5 to 10 seconds on each question uh, be ready guys guys just one more minute please do not drop off until you attempt the quiz so we have three goodies for three lucky winners so please be here just for one more minute okay so here is the quiz uh, you guys can also attend the quiz uh, like later on uh, by after like visiting our platform but let me just log in real quick yeah okay so very first question is what is cloud computing so you can just go through quickly each and every question and tell me the answer so your time has been started already guys everyone please quickly 10 more seconds okay time's up time's up thank you so much guys for responding real quick so let's see so many of you have said a so let me try answering a and c if it works okay so yes it is a correct answer so cloud computing means providing services like storage servers databases and networking so it is like whatever services you are actually getting all the service you are getting on rent and that's why cloud computing is providing all the services so that each and every organization in the world can focus you know on cloud computing because it has all the facilities which are important from an application standpoint okay i'm moving to the next question guys please be ready okay which of the following is not a type of cloud server public cloud server private cloud server dedicated cloud server merge cloud server anyone else guys okay so the answer is d so basically we have servers in public cloud we have servers in private cloud and also we have some dedicated servers so if you guys might have studied or might not have studied in ec2 there are some dedicated instances in aws just like that we have dedicated in dedicate servers in azure as well so dedicated cloud servers are possible so it is not what is so please read the question carefully it is not the question is not about type of cloud it is about type of cloud server okay so there there cannot be merged cloud server you cannot merge the servers that's not possible so that is why merged cloud servers are not uh, is is the correct answer over here okay so you have public servers you have private servers you have dedicated servers but you do not have merged servers okay quickly guys which of the following are the features of cloud computing security availability large network access all of the all of the mention which one guys which one okay so so i think everyone so everyone over here so cloud computing certainly provides security that's why so many organizations are focused on security so i think answer can be a but cloud also provides availability so because cloud is so available that your your applications are going to run 24 into 7 so it's not going to go down ever 
After that, we have large network access, which means like it's gonna be like having it's gonna have a very uh, a very big network. So that is also correct. So it means D is correct. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I just mistakenly clicked on this, but D is you know correct answer. So all of the mentioned is the correct answer. Let's let's move to the fourth question. Okay. So over here, which of the following is the type of cloud computing services? Service as a software, software and a server, software as a service or software as a server. What do you think guys? Is it software as a server or software as a service or software and a server or service as a software? What do you think everyone? So the answer is, third that is software as a service so the answer is third that is software as a service you might have studied platform as a service software as a service and infrastructure as a service so every time you look at this word saas that is always software as a service okay right now there is some problem over here in the quiz from the back end so it will say wrong answer but it is actually the correct answer so the this the the audience, the participants who have answered third, you guys are right. Okay, so we are on the last question. Which of the following choices isn't a cloud computing category? Platform as a service or networking as a service? What do you think that which of the following is not a cloud computing category? So 10 more seconds, everyone. Okay, so the answer is networking as a service is not a category, okay, of cloud computing category. So you have to select this and uh, let's see. Yeah, so it is actually a correct option. So networking as a service is nothing. You know, if someone says networking as a service, that is nothing. So people are calling different names to different services. However, as per cloud computing concept, we do not have any such category, which is networking as a service. So if I just see the result, it's three out of five, like two, two were incorrect, but that's okay. So the people who have answered correctly, shortly within just one or two minutes, um, you know, the, the, my like admin is going to announce the result. Just give me one more minute. They are assessing it and they will announce the results. So Kashish and Kushi guys, are you ready to announce the results? Who are the winners? Just give us one minute. Yeah, Thank you guys. Meanwhile, uh, you know, like admin is coming back with the winners. Uh, so you guys can, you know, drop your questions in the chat window and, uh, you know, let me know if you have any doubt, any question, um, so that we can really help you out. Any question from anyone? Yes, Naman, I have a question. Hi, here is Sam. Yeah. Uh, uh, you just present that one RS um, uh, REST, uh, REST API. So uh, how is the uh, uh, how is the possibility in the REST API job sector in, in near future? Because of that, you are showing that one only the uh, some of the organization is doing that one. I think the, uh, but uh, it would be the great feature uh, in. Uh, in uh, in near as well as how it would be the difficult for the non IT people. Uh, like I am just uh, you know um, like I didn't get the question, Sh Sh Shaman. Shaman, if you if you uh, if you would like to you know just rephrase it once more because your voice 
is actually fumbling for me. I'm not sure if it is for everyone. Uh, either you can drop your question in the chat window or you can just repeat your question. I'll, I'll try my best to listen it again. Shaman, are you there? Shaman, can you hear me? Okay, Shaman actually dropped out. Uh, so guys, uh, any other, anyone else uh, who has the question, anyone? Alex, Tenonso, Antara, Deckard, thanks everyone for joining today, by the way. But any question is welcome. And I would like to, uh, you know, Shaman, I'll, I'll speak to you. I think there is some problem with your... Uh, yeah, you know, Naman, can you hear me right now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, it's it's clear. Uh, and then my question is the REST API. Uh, yeah, what is the uh, future of the REST uh, API as a career, uh, as well as the uh, how difficult it is for the non-IT people? You got uh, you get my question? Yes. So, Shaman, REST API is just one concept of entire IT. It's just one concept. You cannot have the career on REST API. It is just one concept which is important from an interview perspective. Okay, so you do, okay. you okay. Yeah. So you are basically focusing on cloud. When you are learning cloud, there is possibility that interviewer is going to ask you a question on REST API. Let's imagine if interviewer asks you, how will you integrate two different applications? So you will respond that with the help of REST API, we can integrate two different applications. Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, now I can understand. Thank you for Naman. Thank you so much, Shaman. So here are the winners. Uh, Baljinder, congratulations. You are the first winner. So I- Thank you. <laughs> congratulations. Uh, I think Vimi, Vimi, uh, uh, like Vimi, are you there with us? So Vimi, Yes, I, I am, thank you. Congratulations, really. It's, it was really quick. I was looking at the chat window. Thanks a lot <laughs> for giving the prompt answers. And Kola, Kola, I think you are you are here, my friend. So yeah. uh, congratulations, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So thank thanks a lot for you know giving so prompt answer and making it very interactive. So uh, I know like the quiz was uh, you know quiz was only of a, like of four of five questions, but it really went well. Thanks everyone for joining. If you have any question, just let let me know or let us know. Uh, we can wait here for a few more minutes. Uh, otherwise, we can drop off. And please, please remember to pass the feedback to us. If you really want these sessions to be conducted, uh, you know, every week or every bi-weekly. So please pass on your, you know, pass on your, uh, you know, feedback to us so that we can conduct sessions in future as well. And we can improve. Okay, so I think there's no question from anyone. Okay, thank you everyone for, thanks for joining. Um, I'll see you again, um, maybe next week or uh, like after two weeks when we schedule another session and please pass the feedback. Thank you everyone for joining. Really appreciate all your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Naman for your pres nice presentation. Hope it will be happen every month. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah, sure. And Vimi, uh, Vimi and Baljinder and Kola, please drop your, uh, you know, home address in the chat, in the Zoom chat so that we can, you know, deliver uh, the, you know, goodies. So you can drop your, you know, home address or you can drop your home address on my, uh, you know, WhatsApp so that we can take it forward. Okay, Naman. Thank you. Thank you. Vimi, please, you also uh, send it. Yeah. Kola, please. Hey, buddy, have a great new month, okay? Sorry? I say have a great new month. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Have a happy May. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good start. Okay. See you guys later. Bye. Thank you.